Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Soda Review Podcast. My name is Julian, and I thank you for joining me. On today's episode, I decided to sample a beverage from a local soda company, Spring Grove Soda Pop, which uh, coincidentally enough is located in Spring Grove, Minnesota. Um, it says here that uh, it was established in 1895. So apparently this soda company has been around for quite some time. Um, I've had uh, two of their sodas in the past. Um, I sampled their root beer and their black cherry. As I recall, neither of which uh, really were all that memorable. Um, so I'm hoping uh, to, to uh, tip the scales with this one. Uh, I'm rooting for the uh, locals, and today I'm going to be sampling their orange flavor. It's got a pretty uh, DIY kind of aesthetic to the uh, labeling. It's basically just a clear plastic uh, label adhered to the bottle, uh, which just says Spring Grove Soda Pop, orange right in the center there. Um, and then it's actually got a nice sort of tableau of a little forest setting, um, replete with a, uh, buck. Uh, I, I assume that's what that is. Uh, uh, oh, and then right in the corner beneath the buck, it actually says Mong Tusen Tok, which, if memory serves, is Norwegian for, hey, thanks, bro. Uh, if we turn it over here on the back... As far as the ingredients are concerned, we have carbonated water, pure cane sugar, artificial flavoring, and artificial color, uh, which includes yellow number five and number six, and good old red number 40, gum arabic, uh, glycerol ester of wood rosin, citric acid, and it is preserved with less than 1% of the old sodium benzoate. Um, it also states here that this is a caffeine-free soda, which, you know, of course, made with pure cane sugar, and it is also gluten-free. Um, and, and, oh, and sure enough here, uh, corroborated on the back, manufactured and distributed by Spring Grove Soda Pop, Inc., uh, which is located in Spring Grove, Minnesota, 55974. So like I said, this is the orange variety. I'm going to go ahead and pop the top. Yeah, that was a satisfying pop. That was That was a textbook pop. It already bodes well um, and works in the favor of the soda. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and dive in, and, and we'll, see, uh, we'll see how it tastes. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. That, um, boy, that is uh, pretty much exactly the opposite of uh, what I was hoping for, unfortunately. Yeah, boy, you know, I, hmm, I was hoping to get a nice uh, sort of um, drop kick to the face of, uh, you know, a crisp, um, tart, uh, orange, uh, soda. And this instead is more of, um, like a lilting, uh, suggestion, uh, or a whisper almost with sort of, uh, remnants of, uh, orange, you know, sort of like the memories of what an orange, uh, flavor should taste like. You know what, uh, what it is here is, uh, this is actually the, the orange flavor um, that you would get in, uh, what do they call those? In, in a, uh, dreamsicle, you know, the, the popsicle or, or, or even dreamsicle soda. Uh, it's, it's very soft. It's sort of just like lingering in the background, you know, just, uh, minding its own business, kind of like, you know, oh, monk to some talk, bro, you know? Um, yeah, it doesn't really have much, uh, of a personality, I'm afraid. Um, but hey, that's the gamble in the soda game. So I guess that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Um, I thank you all for joining me. I've been Julian, signing off.